This is a fantastic extended Tattoo Now interview with Kaya Heitland and Marcus Leonard, two biomechanical masters. Tattoo Now has been helping connect tattoo collectors and the curious with world-class talent from all around the globe since the mid-90s. You are invited to join us as we dive into the heart of tattoo now! They cover a wide variety of topics, including all the science fiction, books, and movies that help inspire some of their visions. And of course, they do a, a deep dive into biomechanical tattooing and artwork, and uh, cover a variety of other topics, including music and what it's like to kind of cook and, and how uh, that could actually influence your tattooing also. So it's exciting to be able to bring to you this extended interview with Kaya Heitland and Marcus Leonard. This video is being brought to you by Reinventing Live, a one-day intensive event hosted by Guy Aitchison and featuring Stefano Alcantara, Marcus Leonard, and Kaya Heitland. Check out this video talking about it and then go visit tattooeducation.com to catch the live ticket or possibly the replay. Cheers. Enjoy. Hi, I'd like to invite you to be part of a unique educational event, Reinventing Live. On Monday, October 14th, I will be teaming up with Marcus Lenhard, Kaya Heitland, and Stefano Alcantara to address some of tattooing's toughest questions. This will consist of a couple live tattoo projects where I'll be sitting with these artists focusing closely on what they're doing and picking their brains, including audience questions. This will be followed by online portfolio critiques and an energetic panel discussion. I'll then be taking another live tattoo project into the late night hours. You can attend Reinventing Live in person at Euro Tattoo in Rockville, Illinois, or you can attend online. Tickets are available now at reinventingthetattoo.com. Hope to see you there. Our next tattooer is from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Um, she's awesome. She's into bio tattoos, also makes jewelry, has awesome pictures about foraging, um, has been in uh, the, the sketched out uh, sketchbook with a hundred other artists. Um, you know, and, and frankly, anyone who can converse with Marcus Leonard for hours and days at a time is, is a friend of ours. Um, on Instagram, it's at Tattoos by Miss Kaya, uh, mm -hmm. T-A-T-T-O-O-S-B-Y-M-I-S-S-K-A-I-J-A. -S 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 uh, I'm going to try to I'm gonna pronounce it right, Kaya Heitland. How I'm, are you? Yeah, I'm doing really well. I'm awesome. doing well, super well. Well, well thanks for uh, for coming on the show. And uh, let's, let's start with some softballs. Uh, do you mind talking about the... Maybe the Canadian tattoo scene a little bit and how you got into it. Oh, sure. Of course. Um, I started uh, tattooing just over 10 years ago uh, on the Sunshine Coast, which is just outside of Vancouver. Super small town. Uh, no other tattoo shops except the one in Seashelt. And uh, I got a summer job working there when I was like 17. And uh, the guys both kind of partied a little bit and needed somebody to do line drawings for them in the morning. So uh, that's how I uh, showed that I was good enough to, to draw at least. And uh, so I put, a get, put together a little bit of a portfolio and uh, they took me on. Piat Barker and Sean Headley was working there at the time. Um, and then a year later, a machine builder named Jesse Young bought the shop. So he kind of bought me along with the shop. He never wanted an apprentice and kind of, uh, yeah, I was kind of part of the package deal. So I ended up apprenticing under Jesse Young. Awesome. And how much uh, preparation or how much art training did you have before you landed the apprenticeship? Ooh, uh, none. Uh, awesome. besides, um, like, yeah, besides drawing as a kid and stuff like that, tons, like tons of art, um, uh, extracurricular stuff when I was a kid like uh, painting classes and I was always super into jewelry like I've been making jewelry since I was really young super entrepreneurial with that um, and parents who were very very encouraging and put me in every art program but not necessarily anything formal like it wasn't directed sure. so. 17 is pretty young to get into a tattoo shop how old were the dudes uh, uh, they were both in their like mid 30s at the time okay. yeah awesome. yeah they're both in, both in their like late 40s now mid to late 40s so about how long did it take before you were uh, tattooing on the public uh it was a couple of years actually before i started tattooing anybody after i started my apprenticeship like i said jesse bought the shop and uh so there was a bit of delay because he wanted to kind of like <laughs> mm -hmm. reteach me a few things uh but it was a really traditional apprenticeship like both him like jesse's quite um quite a well-known uh, machine builder fabulous machine builder here in canada um, sells his machines to Good Guy Supply, and um, uh, him and Lucas Ford worked very closely oh, together. Yeah, He's okay, yeah, sure. yeah. So uh, they use very similar geometry. So they're uh, they do a lot of work together. Or in the past, have done quite a bit of work together. Um, 
And, they, and, and they, uh, do they both do the Winnipeg Convention or? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think Jesse does the Winnipeg Convention. I've done it for the last couple of years as well. Yeah, cool. Uh, it seems but, like a stellar uh, lineup. Oh yeah, it's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal show. And uh, Rich, the guy who puts it on, is uh, uh, sec to none. Like his uh, his ability to uh, his promotional abilities are fantastic. Like great personality. Like ideal for our community here in Canada to be putting on a show because he just he knows everybody. He's so charismatic and so uh, just super welcoming. Like he really wanted to put together a really family oriented show. So yeah, that's awesome. like. It is a little star-studded um, and a little intimidating for that reason, but like it's it's very close. We're all very close here in Canada. Like our te- our community is uh, is uh, traditional in that sense. We have a lot of traditional values that kind of seep into our tattoo community. Yeah, it's cool. I remember he uh, uh, got mad at me a couple of years ago, and uh, you know I'm a kind of a techie kind of. Uh, uh non-tattooer guys so it's easy to, to yeah, yeah. get mad at me i suppose but uh it was fun you could tell that obviously it was coming from a place of authentic you know love of tattooing and yeah, uh, for sure. you know for me i feel like i also have that same love so you know eventually it always works out in the wash uh, so like you know like i said i appreciate sometimes um you know when people get re- very protective um you know of what's what's sacred and awesome and, and you could tell like from mm-hmm. the show that uh, obviously there's a lot of care and love of, of the craft in it a huge amount yeah. And so like, yeah, Rich was one, actually one of the first tattooers that I met. Um, he was really good friends with Jesse, both Jesse and Piot. So mm-hmm. I went to some, I went to quite a few conventions in the prairies, like the Regina convention, smaller conventions, like more like biker run conventions and stuff for the old school kind of community. So like all of these guys were people that I knew like right from the beginning. So I ended up not really having, I don't really have any peers that are my age. All the guys that I, uh, all the guys, all my friends in tattooing, all my colleagues are all, you know, 40s and their 50s mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And that, you know, with my apprenticeship and stuff like that, they were really, really stringent, actually, about like how much exposure I got to uh, the Internet and magazines and stuff like that. Like, of course, we still like had tons of magazines around the shop, but they were really adamant about me. Um, uh, just doing conventions, like right from the very beginning, I was awesome. doing conventions before I started tattooing and um and like a huge emphasis on like machine building, putting machines together, the kinetics of all of that. And like I built needles. We still use steel tubes in the shop. I scrubbed all the tubes and everything like that. So they were they were pretty adamant about making sure that I, you know, was they they already saw the shift happening and they were really excited about having somebody in their shop who was a worker and really wanted to do all those technical things like learning about mixing ink and building needles and stuff like that. So. Oh, that's awesome. Are you still on uh, coil machines? Yes, I am. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's great. What, yeah. uh, which ones do you want, if you don't mind me asking? <clears throat> uh, I've got quite an extensive collection of Aaron K machines. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, and Aaron's a friend of mine. Um, I had the opportunity uh, a year and a half ago to go down, and I built a set of machines with him in his studio. Fuck yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so Aaron and I have been like friends for quite a few years online, uh, just talking about... Uh, Cause there's this like, there's this little niche inside of like, not just biomech tattooing, but tattooing where you have these like, really technically skilled uh, artisans that do things outside of tattooing. So when you find another tattooer who's like, whether it's metalworking or skateboard building or like uh, fixing and maintaining bicycles or anything like that, they have this like really technical uh, tactile skill. Uh, and like, we got really excited just talking about tools and talking about, um, yeah, metalworking and engraving and metallurgy and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, he was really excited to have me come down. We uh, we built like a, two really phenomenal machines. We were both really excited, but we each got one out of the set. They're both hybrid liners, and yeah. uh, they're all totally made out of sterling silver. Um, and then I did like biomech wire wrapping on both of the both of the frames, and then inset these really beautiful Ethiopian opals into them. So they're like. There's some of the bling- <laughs> blingiest machines that I've ever seen. But, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, have to get a, we'll have to get some pictures. Yeah, totally. Yeah, but what an opportunity that was. Like, he's uh, oh, uh, so eccentric and, like, I, I, so am I. So, like, it, it worked really well. We just, like, holed up in a studio for five days and just listened to death metal and uh, it just, like, ground away with power tools. It was amazing. Yeah, so so, how, so you're into the bio. How did that, is that – was that something that you were always oh. uh, into or where was your introduction? Uh, you know what? Honestly, 
bio and like bio from the 90s and tribal were the two things that made me want to get into tattooing in the first place those are the two things that i i think probably resonate with the most Mm -hmm. um as far as uh like just fit and flow, those are two things that always attracted me to tattooing. I wasn't ever really interested in doing uh, small tattoos, but I mean, for the majority of my career, that's what I've done is small tattoos, being, generally being the only woman in a tattoo shop. You get, uh, you are afforded a very particular clientele, <laughs> usually, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, which, uh, which, I mean, that laid all the groundwork for all my technical skill that I think that I have. Um, and uh, But you have. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but that's obviously all based on yeah doing small small tattoos and stuff but my big interest was the idea that you could uh that you could lay out a bodysuit on somebody that was the coolest thing in the world and like the only two real types of bodysuits that i saw um like when i was in high school when i was growing up was uh um was biomech and tribal those are the two things that i absolutely like guy stuff obviously like my dad got my dad when i was still living at home my dad got me a copy of organica in oh, 2004 awesome. the year that it came out and he gave it to me for my birthday oh shit i've got it it's like yeah right around the corner here it's a fucking yeah and i was like mm. and just how excited i was like i uh but that was like one of my first introductions to like tattooers who were also artists as well mm-hmm. um and my dad just he had seen this book and i was super into mycology i absolutely love mushrooms and mushroom foraging and stuff and he just recognized right away like all of the like uh mycelial structure and fungus and and okay. all this stuff in guy's work and he thought i would absolutely love it so like guy's book that that one in particular in the like all the uh reinventing stuff and uh yeah obviously like those those i got all those books before i started tattooing awesome before yeah, I ever great. got a job in a tattoo shop, like uh-huh. that was so I was kind of always what I want to do. And then Aaron's stuff, obviously, I was kind of obsessed yeah. with too when I was like 15, 16, uh, and just drawing in high school. Like lo- absolutely loved Aaron's stuff. Yeah, do you remember the uh, tattoo wars with Aaron Kane and Guy? The TV show? That's, oh no, I was a uh, <laughs> I uh, I've never actually seen any of it, but uh, oh, it's awesome. If uh, you yeah. go on YouTube, you do a search for Tattoo Wars, Aaron Kane and Guy Atchison. They uh, it was at a, maybe a Hill City in Arizona, yeah, and uh, they both worked on arms. Marcus was there. I think I might have. Uh, yeah, I'm Marcus familiar with it. I just have never. I mean, like, there's so much to digest media wise. It's of you know, um, it's it's been on the list for a few years. <laughs> I yeah, just cool. haven't gotten around to it. So. Awesome. The um, Cool. So, uh, what kind of tools are do you use for for your for your tattooing? Are you a digital person? You still do everything uh, uh, on paper or in canvas, or, or no. what kind of other original uh, mediums are you using? Well, uh, for tattooing, I very recently, like within the last year, got myself an iPad, mm-hmm. and uh, it's really revolutionized the way that I do my drawings for my tattoos because now I never finish drawing. I basically Uh do like rough sketches and then I pull the line work off and uh, I can do like really, really intricate, really elaborate line drawings where I don't have to spend this huge amount of time doing a full illustration because I definitely like in tattooing, like both the guys that train me to tattoo are like super talented illustrators, like comic booky, uh, really natural um, artists. Like both of them are phenomenal artists, even though they're, you know, very traditional as far as tattooing is tattooing goes and uh and i was encouraged to absolutely draw and render and do color studies for absolutely everything and now especially with biomech digital just makes all the sense in the world Mm. to be able to um to manipulate do a really simple sketch and then cut and paste and everything like that it makes a way more sense to be able to do that digitally you you save so much time and with the amount of traveling that i do there's there's no comparison like i don't have to bring a giant sketchbook and like a pack of pencils my pencil sharpener like trying to sharpen a pencil on a plane Uh is just one of the banes of my existence Uh and i never have to do that again like having an ipad and like being able to bring everything with you and and i do like some uh like ditch like logo design and sticker design and stuff like that for like outside of tattooing as well like i do a little bit of um like graphic design for people as well so it it uh it's way easier designing a logo on a iPad than on paper and doing like rendered sketches for somebody oh, sure. who's probably gonna, you know, only pick one. So oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely, no. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't illustrate as much anymore um, by hand. I really want to get back into that. But painting, I do a ton of painting. Awesome. Uh, oils or acrylics? Uh, both. I recently just got into um, into 
doing oils i've been using some water mixable oils and i know that that's a little bit of like a no-no for mm. people who are uh, uh really uh in, into using oils but i find that they're just having a small apartment it's a lot easier than using all the solvents and everything like that sure um, but yeah i love i love painting in acrylics like i've painted in watercolor and acrylic most of my life um and uh and now uh, having somebody to paint with uh, is pretty pretty amazing too. So um, actually being able to do like collaborative sculpture and then painting it and then um, being able to paint on canvas with Marcus is pretty remarkable. Awesome. It's something that he doesn't have a lot of background in, so it's nice to like kind of pull him into that a bit. Into, into the real world, should we pull him into the uh, to the interview now? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Or, uh... Yeah, I think well, so. You want to jump what, in here? You, you want to chat about uh, how you met or? Uh... Sure. Yeah, we can do that. If it's tattooy, um, not a, not if it's gooey. <laughs> <laughs> People love that shit. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, ratings. That's what we're trying to get here. Right. <laughs> uh, we met. Uh, we met online. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, yeah, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and became pretty uh, enamored with each other's work. Mm -hmm. And. Um, one of the things that when people ask, one of the things that we talk about a lot is like, as soon as I saw Mark, I've been following Marcus for many years. Mm -hmm. um, but when I look at his work, sometimes it's really difficult to not understand how I can look at something and feel like it was something that I did and I don't have any memory of doing it. Like there's so, it's really bizarre sometimes. I think we both have that where, yeah, um, yeah well, just it, it's so intuitive and the, the we have such similar shape language we use the same words we use the same kind of diction same sentence structure i'm just, like anybody who's familiar it's with Marcus's familiar. Sem seminars those that's some terminology he uses for like a shape language you the way you structure a sentence the vocabulary that you use like the language that we speak is really really similar it was crazy i can remember the first time that i saw your work and it like Im it immediately resonated in a way that is very familiar, you know, in a way like you see somebody walking in the streets <clears throat> and that person looks familiar and you can't and you know you talk to that person. It's not only like a familiarity, but you know that you talk to that person and then as you are thinking about like where do you know that guy, you actually realize like, oh shit, that guy looks totally like me. Mm -hmm. You know, that, does that ever happen to you? You know, where you where you look at somebody and you realize way later, because you're not used to seeing yourself, right? You're not used to having like an outside uh, view on yourself. I, I expect if you see yourself on video all the time. And uh, I saw I saw some of her sketches for the first time. I was like, holy shit, that looks okay. I'm gonna. I'm going to I'm going to pack that differently because it's so abstract. And I think that we 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 understand this really well between us. We don't need a lot of words to explain that to each other, but it's such a weird um we also don't need other people to think we're crazier. No, exactly. Than they are <laughs> right. <laughs> so. right. Exactly. Um I think when you look at Biomac and especially if you look at somebody who does Biomac really intuitively there's a lot of honesty in there. There's a lot of, it's like your handwriting. You don't really think about how to change your handwriting into something that other people might like necessarily. And I think once you are at a certain level with biomechanic sketching or the, 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 the biomechanic like media art, uh, there's a certain honesty in there that really reflects your, your thought process and the things that you know about your subject matter, like the things that you know about biology, the things that you know about mushrooms, if that's something that leads into your uh, into your sketches, the things that you know about physics or whatever. Physics is a big one that comes that's into it, one, like yeah. dimension, dimension and fit and flow and everything like that. It's all it's yeah. all physics. And you can definitely tell when a person doesn't have that background and is attempting to to draw a lot of biomech you can you can tell that there's definitely a big part of the grammar of that language missing 
Sure. And if yes, the grammar so. is missing, things look a it, little it, skewed and scrambled. You can understand it, but it doesn't. It's not elegant necessarily. It's a really hard thing to reverse engineer. Yeah, and that's like, and it's it's not impossible at all. Like you can totally start by like learning. You can start by learning like texture and general shapes and stuff like that. But unless you, like, unless you have that kind of concept of of where everything is coming from, you are actually just saying a bunch of words. You're not. Right. It's, it's very na nature is very like here. equationy. Yes. Yeah. So yes. it's very uh, it's and it's e so formulaic. That's the uh, thing too. It's equationy. Like Equationy. <laughs> it's yeah. It's, it's extremely, it's extremely equationy. But like, just the way like you, um, something clicks, and I think that even just since I've been in uh, working kind of in in the biomech community, because that's what it is. It's like this lovely little um, subset um, of nerds and uh, scientists and uh, just the fringe of the fringe, really. Yeah. Um, and since I've been working in that, it's really interesting to like see individual people who are like how hard they work. And then all of a sudden one day it totally clicks and yeah. they just get it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're doing like, holy shit. Things are falling into place. You it's totally just see like it. learning. And it's language. like instantly, like you, once, once you gain enough vocabulary, it's like one day you're able to like order a coffee at a, at a store, at yeah. a shop. And it's, mm -hmm. yeah. it's exactly what it's like. And then at exactly. some point you'll be elegant too. Like once you actually feel like, okay, now I can actually use this language to speak and I am understood, then you can start working on your poetry skills. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to go back um, and why we went on this tan tangent yeah. at all, right? <laughs> because what I saw when I saw her sketches was that here is somebody who really has a very strong foundation in the sciences. And you can you can see that right away. There's a very good foundation in the grammar of this language and that immediately spoke to me and the things that she expressed in this language were very very similar to the things that I like to express in that same language and I was immediately drawn to that it looked so familiar it looked so you know and like to outside people you know you, there's sometimes there's there's sometimes moments where it's hard to tell our, our styles, like to, to, to tell exactly where the break line is, where one stops and the other starts. There's, there's a lot of, of overlap, even though we didn't even know each other. And um, that kind of gave both of us an insight into what kind of a person the other person is without ever having spoken to each other. And that is just, that was just hypothetical at that point, all right? And then we started talking to each other and we were able to check all these boxes for like, yeah, 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 knows that, yeah, exactly on the same, you know, on the same line of thinking here, same thought process here, you know, like very, very familiar <laughs> brains really. And uh, that, that really cemented, because we were looking for for kinship, we were looking for friendship when we started to talk to each other, because we we're both in a little bit of a of a pickle at the moment, and I oh, think yeah. both of us needed a bit of a friend, somebody <laughs> who we thought understands us, and that is something that both of us were not necessarily looking for actively, but needing. And um, yeah. So when we reached out to each other, there was just this, this instant connection that grew into something that was just too strong to ignore. And then yeah, it was pretty, needed to pretty pursue undeniable, yeah. actually. Was, was this a particular Facebook group or an Instagram, or like a bio group? Or, the, or this is just happening as a, you know, directly? Or? No, we kind of found each other, I guess, through through using uh, like Biomet Collective and stuff like that, for yeah. sure. But just what, having... That, is, that a, is that a Facebook group or... Oh, it's an, oh, sorry. It's a, it's an Instagram yeah. group that's, uh, yeah. uh, managed by, or, um, curated by Kurt and Kurt Windisch and Guy. And Guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a, at Biomech Collective. Is there an underscore in the middle there? Uh, yeah. Biomech underscore, Bio, underscore Collective. Biomech yeah. underscore <laughs> Collective. Yeah. And that's where, that's where, uh, a lot of us nerds hang out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a really, actually, if you go onto that, their, their Instagram pages is pretty phenomenal. Like it, it there's quite a, 
quite a variety of what's on there, you know, like new people that were really new to it who are showing a lot of, uh, a lot of potential people who, uh, you know, haven't been doing biomech for that long, who show a certain amount of ingenuity, anybody who shows any kind of like, um, potential, potential and, and, in, in, in biomech. And it's not even us, you know, it, the big guys get featured on there all the time, but like they're, they're really, um, egalitarian about the way that they, they promote people. Um, and I, I really like that because it's yeah. because that's kind of one of the things that I love about the biomech community is that yeah. it's there's very little hierarchy in it. And I think that all of the hierarchy that kind of like transfers over from uh, the regular world of tattooing into biomech, it's there's like this film that it kind of dissolves. Mm -hmm. It ends up dissolving a little bit. It's really it interesting. It's it, much more yeah. um, integrated community. Like because really we're so small that. There's, there's no, there's, uh, there's really no, um, a room for, for hierarchy. Yeah. Hierarchy might, I mean, there's not also, the right word. like it's, there's, there's not as, I don't find that there's as much, um, it's also a total sausage party. Oh yeah. Yeah. When, uh, when Marcus first <laughs> saw my stuff, he was like, who is this guy? Yeah. Who is this <laughs> guy? It's pretty good stuff. Like, holy shit. That's a girl. Oh, she's cute too. Uh, oh. woman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's there's not very many of us. We need more hierarchy now. <laughs> a woman uh, entered the room. Agreed. I, I mean, there, is, is, what what can we do to uh, to help solve that? And are there others uh, other women bio tattooers that we could be plugging right now? Or that, oh, um, off the top of my head, uh, there's yeah, there, well, there's, there's a couple. Definitely, I don't necessarily see it as a problem though that needs to be solved. Right? I think that people come to biomech very naturally. And if you have a proclivity to it, like there's, there's no real way that you're going to get around it. You're going to find yourself there. Like it took me almost like 10 years of tattooing to realize that I was supposed to be doing biomech the entire time. And I took, it came full circle. I totally came back to it. It was the stuff that I had wanted to do since the very beginning. And, uh, I uh, I really think that like the people who come into but I'm like I would totally encourage people to do it because it's like obviously you want to try out as many different styles as you possibly can until you find that perfect fit for you. Um, but I don't necessarily see it as a problem. I don't. I think people come to it when they when they have a spark. Like there's so many people that I know that'll just do a one-off ta biomech tattoo that's fucking amazing. Yeah. And then they never do it again. Yeah. You know, but there is definitely. Um, and then there's people who want to do biomech who struggle and struggle and struggle to do something amazing. And they, and, yeah. you know, and, and they never really get it because they want it so much that they don't do anything else. And you need to do other you stuff to, to be good things. at biomech. Yeah. That's the, that's really, the most important thing. There's other technical skills that are just yeah. so necessary because for it's, executing. It's good nothing biomech. because biomech is nothing specific it's but, so unspecific that it needs to be informed by other things but, but Marcus, I, I heard that the the white wing tattoo was the first tattoo that you ever did that uh what, what in germany when you were asked to do a name tattoo you 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 went straight to to the netherlands yes exactly and i told that guy that's not what you want you need to be an angel <laughs> yeah, no. but no i understand yeah absolutely it's, no. uh, it's amazing um, that um so many people will try to skip past you know, those fundamental tattoos, again, where you're just building that technical skill of like how, you know, how, how these holes that I'm poking into the skin heal. Yeah. And, and I, I tried to do the same. I know I'm not taking myself out of that equation. It made me really, it made me really uh, unhappy for a very long time. And then I started to do other stuff and all of a sudden my biomech improved. That's, that's the point, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, but but getting back to yeah. uh, women in biomech, yes. I think that that's a really interesting topic. It's something that we talk about a lot, actually, because yeah. um, there's a lot of uh, uh, well, there's a lot of biological factors that really uh, have a huge impact on the type of art that you're attracted to sure. and your your abilities and stuff. And it doesn't have to necessarily do with uh, with technical skill. Like um, we really do notice, I think that there's a lot of androgyny in um in biomech mm -hmm. like there's something very uh uh non-genderized about definitely like biomech itself like the whole idea of biomechanics is is very uh non-polarized i think it's really androgynous 
But so, in, but in that way, wouldn't it be more just naturally equal with a, a number of women and men doing the, the art if it was if it's gender no. neutral? No, no, I think I think that men are by nature programmed to be more visual. Yeah, we that's we talk about visual acuity a lot, especially yeah. when it pertains to st- something that's like so visceral as tattooing or as uh, as biomech tattooing. Because it's it, there's an eroticism to it, and so men are a lot more have have a bit much stronger visual sexual acuity whereas women tend to have a much stronger um all-encompassing emotional response to that type of thing so the whole idea like the when we talk about it like as a thought experiment women need more narrative and- there there needs to be more narrative and and when when you look at a biomech tattoo it's it's something that's that's so visually impactful that the there isn't really a need for an explanation in a really good biomech tattoo because the fact that it does all that it has to do is make sense it doesn't have to mean it doesn't have to necessarily have yeah. a narrative. Yeah. All it has to do is make sense using, yeah, those laws of physics and stuff yeah. like that when you look at a, a yeah. good solid biomech tattoo. So, like, I think that just generally women are a little bit more drawn to art that, uh, yeah, definitely has uh, eyes and hands and faces and stuff like that, for sure. I mean, like, that's that's just an example, but I think that there's more, there's more storytelling there. Yeah. And something I think, that you can name. You yeah, know, you can name that you it. Can you can name uh, it. Something has a face. Something looks back at you, or something has a name. Uh, something that exists, not necessarily just the, because it's so foundational, right? It's like so structural, and it's just like, if you think about physics, it's super foundational. You know, once you get into biology, you have a lot more narrative, and then what's next from biology is history and. You know, and, soft science. Yeah, and and, and, and the, the soft sciences exactly right. But when <laughs> I'm thinking about biomech, I'm thinking math. I'm thinking physics. I'm not. And then you kind of skip the whole chemistry part, and then you think about biology. But for me, the whole biology aspect is not really even that big. I just think about movement and and weight and we're, and speed and, and and again we're velocity. talking about like very like base biological imperatives like yes. it, it's it's not a conscious thing at all i think that there are more men in biomech tattooing just because it's just <laughs> again i don't know i can't use a better word for it it's just like there's better men have better visual acuity when it comes to things like sex and eroticism and yeah. and like the erogenous feel that 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 biomech tattooing does have i mean like there's no real denying that i mean as much as spiky and as alien like as as spaceshipy as you can make stuff there's something extremely erotic about it and i think that part of that is because it's in the word biomechanics it has to do with the physicality of it yes. it has to do with like how satisfying a biomech tattoo is when you fit it on somebody and it follows every line that you possibly could have followed in the body. Yeah. There's something extremely erotic about that because it, 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 it's so transformative. It's, it's not something on somebody's body. Yeah. It's literally not that it's not a tattoo on somebody. And, and I think that also the lore that biomech is coming from the, the way that you get introduced into it over science fiction, uh, the, the Giger artwork, uh, Huge the a- alien, undertones. like all of that. But mm-hmm. I, I think there's also more boys are drawn to that kind of stuff early in life than girls. I think most girls are not really encouraged to get into science fiction, at least not back then. Maybe now it's way more the case. Yeah. But back when I grew up, when you grew up, that was not as much the case that you had uh, girls really getting into horror movies, alien uh, uh, science fiction and I and, that's totally what I grew up and on. that's what you my dad's a biochemist with, so that's that's that's, and, that's another uh, angle to it yeah. you know grew up on that, old science fiction like weird exactly. dystopian post-apocalyptic science fiction exactly that's what right. I, well, let's, and, uh, let's let's give uh, the viewers a little bit of a, of a list of some of these uh, you know canon sci-fi <laughs> movies. oh yes Okay, All of the things. Cool. Well, I mean, there's some pretty obvious ones. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to go and get a list. You looked like you were getting <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just, I thought I had one, but I'm not at home. <laughs> oh. um, uh, no, I was getting really all excited because the list is so... I mean, there's there's I two to, different aspects there. Though, that there's like, books. there's books and then there's movies, right? And those yeah, are well, two very different things. Like, sure, which one's more important? Start with that one. 
Uh, movies. As far as tattooing is, no. goes, probably movies. The yeah. visual yeah. stuff, yeah. The I mean, stuff. Alien Alien is definitely, I mean, the main. It's pretty up there. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's like, and then there's a lot of nothing before something else comes in. And then and then it becomes very personal about what, what you like. But I think Alien is really foundational for Biomech because it's, you know, Giger's artwork and just the alien itself, like like you said before. It's is, the best representation of his work on screen, for I th- sure. I there's think so, so many absolutely. other terrible movies and that it, he and took part in. It encompasses all of that eroticism, yet it's so dangerous, it wants to kill you. It looks very strange. You have never seen anything like it, yet it is not ugly. And that is key. The mechanics and the physics of it yeah. work so well. It's yeah. such a well-designed entity. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's scary. It's beautiful. It, you have never seen anything like it, and that is what Biomech should be. And the world that it exists in, like he created a context for that that creature to exist in, yeah. and all and and that whole world with the with it's, all the history of it yeah. and everything like that. Like it, it it's so it's self fulfilling. Yeah, space jockey and everything kind of looked alike. Everything looked so organic. We just don't have anything that looks like it. So it was so new. <clears throat> yet elegant and it looked natural it just looked very familiar mm. because he knows how to make something look natural mm-hmm. but it was dark and it was menacing and okay equations <laughs> have you yeah. been to the uh, giger uh what is it? is it a bar there that's in switzerland or there's a oh we haven't no yet. we haven't it's it's uh, super bucket list yeah. it's it's on the list of things that we're like 100 percent. that's yeah. on the list it needs to happen yeah. mm. well do you want to do a movie and i'll do a movie and you do a movie and i'll do a movie do you do a movie? Do a movie then. I might I might get some flack for this, but okay. like one of my favorite visual rep- representations of um, of like dark biomech is actually uh, Chronicles of Riddick, mm-hmm. including Pitch Black. Oh, no, well, not. I mean, like the. I mean, it's a phenomenal yeah, I'm too old movie. For that. I skipped all that. Super. That's a good movie. Okay. Dark Fury, Pitch Black. It's they're nice all great. Them, but Chronicles of Riddick, like the third one, uh, really, <laughs> really, really played off of a lot of that, uh, uh, like Geeker's really '80s looking stuff, and then totally updated it. Hmm. So there's like, uh, it's it's a little bit more palatable. Like the the lighting's better. Um, it's more refined. The way that they built the sets and everything like that. It's kind of like. All that Giger stuff, but I really love it. It's got this like I, I really, I, it's I, got I a really cool like edgy space wizardy occult feel to it. Didn't make a memory. Yeah, I don't know if it's a movie that you've seen. I but... haven't. No, no. Otherwise, I'd no? be uh, piping in a little. I mean, like it's it's been Diesel. I'll watch it's it now. Some... That's only going to get you so far. But the yeah. the the visual aspect of that movie, like everything, is so beautifully designed. Like the lighting is amazing, and uh, they really yeah updated that like eighties. Yeah, I mean, there are so many to choose from. If I go. But specifically biomech. Films. I mean, not it's not specifically biomech, but or the aesthetics sci-fi. that really. Well, Blade Runner. Well. Mm. And the new one. I mean, the old one's one of our favorite things. No, I was gonna. World. I was gonna say 2001: Space Odyssey, just for the aesthetics of it, <laughs> just for yeah. for the feel of what I feel space travel is like. You know that that kind of loneliness and the the, the time frame and the time that the movie takes and everything. The physics are. Actually, they they got the physics they really right. Hold which, up. Yes, and that movie and it holds, holds up. up. It holds up so well. That's pretty amazing. But um, the Blade Runners, man, holy Moses! Yeah, mm-hmm. visually, like the new Blade Runner is absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. Mm. Great sound the too, of course. The, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Is it Johan Johansson? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. His stuff. Where? No, huge... no, it's no. not. No, it's not. The new oh, one's, he just uh, has Hans Zimmer, yeah, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Johan exactly. Johansson does have that the last right. track though in the yeah in the credits, and I waited the whole oh. I waited through the credits to actually listen to it. That's right, it's only one track. Oh, okay. But like Marcus likes 2001 so much that our Google Home he had to change to the male voice so that it sounded more mm-hmm. like Hal, like <laughs> and he talks <laughs> nice. to it way more now. Yeah. Nice. I, um, you, you talk to your I, house? Is it you have like a Siri or a? Uh, I talk talk to the house. Yeah, no. Google. 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 Google, Home. Google is a little bit more benign than Apple in my in my opinion. <laughs> you, you it think? doesn't. Well, it's also a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> We're not trading in state secrets. Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> I'm not well, worried about that. It. <laughs> but it, I I think it's well. A I think it's more benign. I think Apple also. I feel like Apple is really insulting our intellect. 
And uh, it's just Apple steers you into a direction that is in their interest way too much. But we don't need to get into that. I have a whole huge opinion <laughs> on Apple. Uh, um, yes, yeah, so we'll say that for a geek discussion panel in the future. Yeah, totally. Sure. Uh, um, but, so next, next, uh, either either next movie or book. Yeah, books. Let's move on to books. That's, I mean, uh, for biomech stuff. Uh, yeah, I have so much. Like there's more in books for me than, yeah, than, than in movies because then I get to paint it myself, right? Mm-hmm. And there's just a couple of books that have a lot of potential to to fill in the gaps. Um, uh, I'm all start like Arthur C. Clarke. Oh yeah, definitely Rama. Mm. Mm-hmm. Rama. Yeah, Rama's amazing. Rama two, eh. Rama. Rama. It's definitely. Great. Rama um, two is weird. It's super weird. Uh, Robert Heinlein's work. I'm a huge mm-hmm. fan. Hey, Dad. Mm-hmm. A huge fan of like Stranger in a Strange Land, mm-hmm. Time Enough for Love. Absolutely, f- f- like I grew up again reading science fiction with my dad. Colin Wilson, um, that whole genre of just like when, like really early science fiction. I love that everything was so new, and these ideas that people were writing about were literally for the first time. Like I, yeah. it's it, these ideas are super raw and they're not fleshed out and it's not a movie. It's just a singular idea that a whole, the whole premise of a book is, is written on. I, I love that. Like it's mm-hmm. not Dune, Dune, of course, mm-hmm. all Frank Herbert stuff. Dune, Frank Herbert, Dune yeah, way for up sure. there for me. Super, super important. Uh, Michael Crichton's work, obviously Andromeda strain mm-hmm. and Jurassic Park is my favorite novel of all time. Yeah, ever, um, ever travels? Did you ever read travels of his? No, like, uh, short I didn't. Stories know, yeah. and, uh, that guy's great. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I really love his writing. Really well researched. Alistair Reynolds, guy, 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 actually, uh, um, just got, got me into Alistair Reynolds when we started um, hanging hanging out, and um, that was so compatible because it has everything that Arthur C. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke brings to the brings to the game. That is. Like very sciencey and very well researched uh, uh, scientific knowledge and lots of biomech, lots of weird. Like Alistair Reynolds is ruthless in the way that he kills people. He's just mm. like, but he's using physics and he's using uh, uh, like just he's a he's an astronomer. He worked for ESA for a while and he wrote. Uh, a book series called Revelation Space that is bringing everything together, uh, uh, relativistic space battles, um, AI, um, things that go wrong with nanotechnology, where that's where the biomechanical stuff is coming in, uh, and physics, 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 and uh, relativity, and um, oh, man, those books are good. Those are still some of my favorite books that I've ever read. So um, I'm going to reread those pretty soon. But uh, yeah, lots of lots of really cool stuff in there. Holy shit! I wish that that would actually be turned into a movie at some point. But uh, yeah. well, if we're, we're going on science fiction, I don't clearly I don't know uh, visually, but uh, Isaac Asimov and Foundation series oh, and the Robot series those yeah. were for me. Uh, yeah, I had a lot yeah. to do with thinking about longevity and yes. uh, and time and, and space and. Uh, but uh, and how about uh, some music, uh, Kaya? Do you have any uh, favorite playlists or uh, uh, while you're tattooing? Well, I'm tattooing. Well, I do uh, like when we're in the studio. It's a lot different than when I work at the shop because the mm-hmm. shop that I work at, I work, I, I work at Sacred Heart. Sorry. I didn't oh yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's again. start there. Let's yeah, yeah. two two questions. Um, One of uh, where do you tattoo? How can people get tattooed by you? And what um, kind of music could they expect oh. to, to be listening to? <laughs> so our uh, our work right now is a little bit interesting because we are spread. We we live between Vancouver and Germany. We live between Vancouver and Berlin. So yeah. we just finished building our studio, a two person studio at our house in just outside Berlin, Von Litz. Um, and it's pretty much like a spaceship, as you would imagine. Mm-hmm. Anywhere that we would work would be a little bit. Um, really streamlined, really. Um, and now that we're doing most things digitally too, we have all our, our workstation, our monitors and stuff, everything in there. Um, and so we're part-time there and part-time here in Canada. Um, we work at Sacred Heart. I've been working at Sacred Heart for six years. Uh, there are seven other tattooers that work there actually. So it's, it's an absolutely phenomenally 
beautiful shop. It's a really beautiful shop. It's two really stories like and everything's glassed in. We have a yeah. huge patio on the back, barbecue, everything. Mm, Anybody who know, city. we love yeah. having guest artists. Love it. There's tons of room for guest artists and it's something that we really try to encourage as much as possible. Like, we love having people come visit Vancouver. We think it's a phenomenal city. Yeah. It's a uh, really good clientele and stuff. So, uh, when we're here, we, uh, we work at Sacred Heart and, um, so with having, you know, uh, seven, eight other people to work with, uh, it, it kind of depends on the day who's working, what we get sure. to listen to. Um, uh, while I'm working, if I had my absolute dream day, I would listen to very heavy metal the entire time. I like starting off my morning with a little bit of Machine Head or like Born of Osiris or uh, Between the Buried and Me. Um, those are some of my go-tos first thing in the morning. Um, and then, you know kind of taper off into some some kind of stoner doomy stuff mm -hmm. i like you know we, we like easy listening to like a lot of graveyard and uh but we both listen to a lot of metal mm -hmm. um which translates really well into having a lot of ambient music in our life too yeah. we listen to a lot of like soundscapes a lot of like yeah dark ambient not necessarily electronic all the time but like more music uh, more musical instrument driven ambient music yeah, yeah like um, Niels from and, yeah uh, Niels from lots of soundtracks yeah. sci-fi soundtracks are amazing yeah Sci-fi soundtracks are amazing. Johan Johansson already oh, came up. Yeah, phenomenal. Um, I'm just going through. And then the from that, here. that that transitions really, really nicely into uh, we listen to a lot of Scandinavian music. Yeah, uh, lots of Vi lots of Viking music, lots of uh, really dark, beautiful, resonant, um, long drawn out notes, lots of really heavy bass, like some synthesized stuff, but mostly really traditional music. Um, but yeah, like we we both really like that dark um ancient aspect to yeah, it neoclassical like yeah. like scandinavian inspired neoclassical stuff yeah. and uh, <clears throat> like yeah something that is something that makes it easy to tattoo somebody to too right i mean a, a lot of my musical taste personally comes from having to adjust my playlists to the needs of somebody who was getting tattooed for three days in a row right um Yes, so I, I faced journey. yes mm -hmm. exactly. So I, I faced I faced metal uh, like really hard stuff out of my out of my playlists for a while. I still love it, but um, it's not always the best thing to play for somebody who is trying to stay like with you know with a pain or you know who's who's trying to to stay in a mood or in a mode where you can get tattooed like that like intensely for for that long so we reserve um, a lot of our metal he i listen to my down and pantera in the car mm -hmm. uh, on the on the autobahn on when the we're autobahn. driving we autobahn just, music now. not yeah. 200 kilometers an hour we just crank the metal <laughs> <laughs> nice well uh, i uh, i apologize just as we were uh, getting comfortable and getting ready to start talking about religion and, and politics um, we, I kind of, I kind of have to boogie a little bit, so I don't know if uh, m maybe we can pick up this conversation in a, in a couple of weeks. But um, yeah, this, this was a wonderful. lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, we should. We should. Yeah, in, in a couple of weeks, we'll be uh, we'll be back in Germany, and I'll be. I'm actually taking a small sabbatical from tattooing. I'm taking almost three months off. Holy shit! Uh, yeah, what are you uh, to do? work out. I'm working on my cookbook. I'm writing a cookbook. Awesome. So I have a separate whole Instagram account for that as well. Um, oh, let's hear about it. What is oh, it? It's it's called Of the Farm and Field, and it's uh it's it's stories and recipes from like living and far I used to farm and hunt mm -hmm. in the Pacific Northwest. I had a farm, a duck farm, and I raised chickens and vegetables and stuff. So it's all stories from living in the bush and hunting and smoking meat and foraging uh, in the forest. So brilliant. Oh well, it'll be amazing. Well, yeah, we'll definitely have to catch up when you're in the middle of that. Would love yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah there's a lot we'll, more to unpack. We'll like pod, we'll uh, stream from the kitchen. I'll just sit there and prepare whatever. I'll talk all about hunting and all of our new friends in Germany. Awesome. Hell yeah. yeah. We did a uh, um, in one of our previous podcasts. <clears throat> uh, there was a, a a butcher who showed us how to oh, make awesome. pasta. You know, it was an Italian pasta uh, recipe. You know, obviously to add the the, the great meat to. Yeah. But, uh, it's fun. I love. We love uh, branching out into all the different nooks and crannies. Oh my of, god. Uh, of influence. Yeah. I'll talk talk about tattooing all day while I make food. I love that. That's my yeah. favorite thing to do. Like everything Glass is of wine very, and <laughs> everything is very interconnected with all the things that we do in our free time. Everything is like we 
yeah, we take everything back into the visual, even though sometimes it's very poetic, even though sometimes it's very conceptual. But everything that we do is storytelling and yeah. food fits really, really well into there. There is a narrative yeah. there that's that's just intuitive. It doesn't have to be explained. Yes. And people just understand it inherently. Like it's yeah. all storytelling. The other yeah. thing I've noticed is that, uh, you know, when people are as talented as, as you two, uh, the people that seek you out uh, are often best in class or they seek best in class. So like... And obviously, there's a lot of chefs, you know, a lot of amazing chefs that are that are, you know, tattoo mm -hmm. clients of, of awesome tattoos. Oh yeah. And, uh, one of the things I love about traveling around with a tattoo circuit is you always end up at like awesome restaurants and oh, right, always, you know the yeah. best clubs, and uh, it really is a, a a fun way to kind of skip right to the like like yeah. like I don't really encourage many people to be snobs, but like if you are a tattoo snob, that means that you really do want to have the highest quality the things. And, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and that's, that's one of the most beautiful things about tattooing is like we are afforded a level of luxury and um, access to a certain type of lifestyle that like what an amazing thing to be an artist and actually be able to be afforded such a rich life. Yeah. Tattooing is such a fucking gift in that respect. Like yeah, it's the privilege. things that we are allowed in our life because yeah. of tattooing. Agreed wholeheartedly. Yeah. Very thankful. Yes. Awesome. Well, uh, well, cheers. Any any last words or? Uh... Uh, it's up to you. Quick, you're I mean, on the spot. I, Say something I know, wise. Right? Um, no, we're just really excited about this next phase in our life. Uh, starting up the new studio. I'm taking that sabbatical, so uh, for the for my cookbook, and uh, so all of our clients are actually our test kitchen for that. So they get tattooed by Marcus, mm -hmm. and they get two meals a day at our new studio. And we're really trying to do something super different. So I'm just really excited about yeah, like getting all this feedback from the food and everything, and getting to actually work alongside. Um, Marcus on a daily basis and, and really see the transition into our new, our new life together. Yeah. So, so awesome. everything is very, lots of harmony. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Well, uh, well, thanks again. And, uh, yeah, let's, uh, we'll catch up. Hopefully people will either, uh, find you in Germany or, or in British Columbia and, uh, or on the internet. Perfect. Thank you Excellent. so much. This is really, really fun. Yeah, Cheers. thanks for the opportunity again. Oh, absolutely. Agreed wholeheartedly. It was a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, we'll, we'll do it again sometime. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Have fun. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye.